Hi, my name's Gemma Hawkins. I've been in the breed now for about three and a half years. Verity was my first dog. She got us addicted to the breed, really. And uh, since then, we've bought Isla. And today we also have Alfie, a four-year-old red and white setter visiting for the day. They're close friends of ours and good friends for V and Isla. The Irish red and white setter should be aristocratic and should be well proportioned, but without lumber. The dogs should be less racy than the Irish red setters. They should be a pearly white coat with predominant red patches. Um, their coat should be fine and that makes them easy to groom. On some of their legs and sometimes on their faces, they can have um, some mottling and some slight flecking, um, but generally that's not too desirable over their bodies. Um, they should have feathering on their legs and their front and they'll also have a long feathery tail. Generally the red and white setter will have a dark patch either side of their face, dark brown ears. They generally have a clear white, pearly white front and clear legs. The breed dates back to Roman times when they were generally used as hunting dogs, used to flush out game for hunters. By the late 17th century, they were then referred to as setters. At this point, the red and white setters, the red setters, were all just classed as a setter type of breed and were all mated together back then. Late in 1875, the Irish setter became more popular across the US and in Ireland and this caused the red and white setter to drop in numbers, almost to the point of extinction. A small number of breeders in the 17th century to the 19th century tried to keep the breed alive. During this time, the breed were sometimes known as Rossmore setters. In the UK, it's still registered as a vulnerable breed due to less than 300 registrations per year. As they were originally bred for working, you often see certain traits about them when you're out walking. They'll see game, they'll sniff out deer, they'll chase them, they'll stop, point, and it's amazing when you can see them. Some dogs now in the UK and across Ireland and across the world are still used as working lines. But as I've shown today, my dogs are more of the show type. Um, the working type are a lot finer and, and leaner looking, but they're still lovely dogs. Their temperaments are amazing. They're so affectionate, you can see. Um, they're lovely and loyal um, when they're not chasing things. Um, they're good natured, they're good around children, good with other animals. They love people, they love other dogs, and they're really great to have as part of the family. As with most dogs, if you introduce them to different environments as soon as possible, they get used to it. We've got two cats. We've found that the dogs have been curled up in bed with them. As a puppy, Isla used to curl up in bed with our cat, Thomas. And then eventually, um, as she outgrew the space, she had to find a new bed, and uh, Thomas remained in hers. They're great with children. A couple of our friends have children and the dogs are so caring and gentle. They're just brilliant around everything, really. As you'll see, um, V is lying on my lap right now and this is where she likes to spend a lot of her time. Isla, very affectionate, wants to be around people all the time. Alfie being a boy, he's a bit of a mummy's dog. They don't respond to one person specifically. With training, they'll respond to either owner. If someone different comes into the garden or into the house, they will be curious. They might bark a little bit, but as a guard dog, you'd, you'd kind of want them to, to bark to scare away any intruders you had. Um, but generally, they're quite quiet. Um, Isla gets most excited when it's dinner time, so she does let us know when it's dinner time and, and barks a little bit, as does Alfie. Um, but they're not noisy, generally, at all. I think when you choose to get a red and white setter, you've got to consider your lifestyle and the choices that you're going to make over the 11 to 13 years you're going to own a red and white setter. 
My husband and I both work, but we work different times of the day. We do come home at lunch and I'll work from home when I can, as will my husband. A lot of people will say that you can't work and have a red and white setter, but I think they get used to whatever lifestyle they're brought into. Good routine works well for us. Whilst we're at work, they sleep. Even when I'm here, they're asleep. They know that lunchtime's a bit of playtime, they go out in the garden, and they'll know that when we come home from work, they'll go out for a nice long walk and lots of free running. So they get used to their routine as to what they're brought into. We got Verity as our first red and white setter. And at that time, we only had the cats. I would strongly recommend that you only bring one into a household at a time. Once they're about 18 months to two years, they start to settle a little bit. And that's a good time to introduce another one to the home. And that's when we got Isla. And they're great together. They love each other's company. They love playing together. And it's a good age gap to have two together. But they do enjoy their alone time. We go to shows with ours, so sometimes we'll leave one at home and just take, just take one of them. And they're happy with that. I think they like having their time alone with their mummy. Um, but again, they're, they're good together, but generally most dogs do prefer to be more than one. As adult dogs, they will take as much exercise as they can get. Um, again, routine's really good, get them used to knowing when they're going out for a walk. Have to cover these ears at that point. Um, know when they're going out to be exercised. And, and generally, free running is best for them. A good 45 minutes to an hour run a day, we give ours. Alfie, he goes out in the morning as well as the evening but it depends on your lifestyle. They love going to the beach, they love going to woods, fields, everything. As a puppy, though, you've got to be careful about the amount of exercise they have. And generally, up to nine months, they should just have some controlled exercise, a little bit of free running, but usually in the garden, that's enough. Um, lead walking, um, you obviously want to get the dog used to being on a lead and being in a controlled area. But as a puppy, it's a good opportunity to take them to different environments, taking them to the beach, out in the car, getting them used to different people. We take ours to lots of country shows as puppies because then they get used to crowds, people touching them, people seeing them. Um, good way to promote the breed as well. And, uh, and get them used to walking on paths so they're used to traffic noise and, and different things bicycles, cars, trucks, all those sort of things as soon as possible. They are intelligent and they learn quickly. You think they'll pick something up and you think your training may be done, but no, you've got to keep going, you've got to keep working, you've got to keep them interested. Because they're so intelligent, you've got to keep their minds active. We've got a lot of friends around the breed who will do different things with the dogs. We'll show ours, so we do a lot of school with them at home. But we've got friends who do agility, fly ball, working, and they love it. They thrive off training, working, school, whatever you call it. But they learn quickly and they enjoy it. Generally, reward-based training in any sense works for them. It could be um, through food, through clicker training, that's very effective. Um, but just toys, cuddles, anything like that, a little bit of affection, the dogs, the dogs just work really well with that. In terms of grooming, a good brush once a week, a bath as and when required, and just trimming occasionally to keep their feet nice and short. Um, otherwise, on, when they walk, they get a lot of mud clumping around their feet, which isn't very comfortable for them. Uh, trimming their nails regularly. Um, again, that's a good thing to do when they're a puppy to get them used to having um, something clipping their toes. Um, and just removing some of the, the hair that builds up around their ears to avoid grass seeds and things getting in their ears and any infections they might get. 
there's a variety of brushes that we use. The pin brush is good for all over. A soft bristled brush for the top of their coat keeps the dirt out of the coat. But we've got different types of combs as well that we use to brush through their ears and their feathers. But generally any brush once a week is usually sufficient. As they come into and out of winter and seasonal changes, they will drop their coat and that seems to happen fairly quickly. Um, you'll see a lot of hair and then all of a sudden the dogs will, will stop molting. So it, they don't molt too bad. Um, with bitches after their season, they'll lose their coat. Um, and that's another time when you'll find that they'll be molting. Less than most breeds, the Irish Red and White Setter doesn't have many health problems. But as a small breed, all the breeders are really conscious about introducing good clean stock into the breed. Any health problems uh, are identified in the breed, are communicated well and are dealt with as quickly and efficiently as possible. If anything does appear, then people generally won't use that dog to breed any further because we're all in the breed to try and protect it and to try and encourage it to be in the best health as possible. They live to a good age of 11 to 13. They are generally healthy dogs, but it is good to identify if they've got any problems in, in their lines with any eye problems or hip problems. But generally, anything, any problems that have been identified in the breed would have been bred out by the time you're, you're looking to get a puppy. We spent quite a long time researching the breed. We talked to different people. Uh, we looked for a dog that matched our lifestyle, that was active, that could keep up with us, but also something that we could get a hobby from as well. As the dogs are intelligent and they like to do so many different things, it's a really good idea to think about your lifestyle how active you are and what you want from your future. Um, they are addictive. You generally find once you've got one, you want another. Um, you get involved in lots of different activities, be it agility, fly ball, obedience, or dog showing. We've met loads of friends in the breed. All the breeders have been really supportive and all the other show people have been really supportive. But you've really got to research the breed and just make sure the breed's right for you. With males and females, the temperaments are both the same. They're both affectionate, they're both intelligent. The only real difference is the size and the strength that a dog will have. Alfie's quite a bit bigger than V and Nyla. You just need to consider the strength that a dog will have. But generally, the temperaments are both great. I would never change. Um, red and white setters are definitely for us. Um, we're hoping to breed in the future as well and just because we can't get enough of red and white setters really. Um, now seeing a lot of puppies out this year it just makes you broody for more dogs. Um, we had to move house to get a bigger house so we could have more dogs and I'm sure once someone has one red and white setter they'll never settle on one. Mm.